presenter, we have Rudy Burahman, who is going to present his uh, speech about the Zafar warning in myths in Indonesia. Uh, Rudy Burahman, you have 15 minutes. Let me tell you a story from uh, Java, my life story, and how it relates to my research or upcoming uh, research. Uh, this title is Disaster Warning, Myths, Legends, and uh, Folklore, but I like to use the Indonesian term Cita Rakyat, or Stories from the People. These are the stories that I heard when I was deployed to various disaster locations in the 12 years I've been working in Indonesia, jumping from one disaster to the other. Usually, when a disaster occurred, people would evacuate outside, whereas in my case, when a disaster occurred, I would directly fly into the location and try to provide uh, services and support. And uh, this is a very nice statement where we like to recognize and pay respects to the past, present, and uh, future. And this would be something nice if we could implement something like this in Yogyakarta, where we pay respects to the Sultan land in the past, present, and future, and all of the kingdoms before. So, you said all right. So this is my uh, journey. I was born on uh, Yogyakarta, right outside the gates of the Sultan Palace in a small village called Kauman. Uh, I like to say Kauman is like the in in incubator of future Indonesian leaders. That's where you have uh, Sukarno. Uh, transition there. Uh, Kustur was also there, and uh, the head of the founder of Muhammadiyah, Ahmad Dalan, was also there building like an incubator right outside the Sultan's uh, palace. Uh, I studied in uh, Gajah Mada University. Gajah Mada was from a famous prime minister of the Majapahit Empire, and at that time, as a student, a big earthquake hit my city. 6,000 uh, people died in 2006, uh, and at that time I became an uh, affected person. My house had cracks, but it was still solid, and we were still safe inside, and we used it as a temporary evacuation uh, site for five families uh, in Bantul, which was have severely affected their houses. So I started as an affected person, then I became a volunteer, and then uh, the Red Cross, uh, the National Federation for Red Cross, hired me as a note taker and a translator. So this is the beginning uh, journey, how disaster is very <coughs> integral in my part. Uh, the second, uh, I took my uh, master's in Diponegoro University, uh, the Prince Diponegoro, a very uh, leader in uh, Java, uh, who fight against the colonial powers. And at that time, I worked with uh, JICA, Japan National Cooperation Agency where uh, we had a national program, and I lived in uh, Jakarta, uh, moved to North Sulawesi and NTB for a four-year uh, project. And when I finished my studies and when I finished uh, the project, I moved to uh, Jakarta, I worked with Save the Children uh, as a humanitarian coordinator. So preparing for uh, upcoming uh, disasters and providing emergency response. Uh, two years with them, traveling to places from Aceh, uh, the border of Timor Leste and Atambua, and uh, various regions in Indonesia doing emergency uh, response. And then I realized that uh, disaster and stories is important, and how we translate those stories. And finally, I'm in Darwin. I got a scholarship from the Indonesian government, and last year I was awarded the Young Scientist Awards from the IRDR about my contribution to uh, disaster and how it impacts on the people. Uh, now, the start of the story of disaster, if we look at the lens of scientists, is the Toba supervolcano, 74,000 years ago. It is a small, uh, it is a lake, a volcano in uh, North uh, Sumatra, and many scientific uh, research conducted that it's one of the biggest volcanic uh, eruptions ever occurred in human history, and which altered the climate creating a volcanic uh, winter uh, and the start of a 
ice ages, so volcanic uh, eruption causes. And I thought that the stories coming out from that would be about massive eruptions, about dragons and fire, but the stories, that was not the stories coming out from the community. It was more about Lake Toba, how if you violate the sacred promise of, uh, of the people, or between the wife, husband and child, water will start gushing out. So the problem, the stories in this area was not about dragons and fire, but it was about water. And as we can see that the people there uh, in North Sumatra was focusing on that the water was the one that was causing, causing the deaths. Water, floods, landslide was causing uh, the deaths. So that's just like uh, people with their stories, generation to generation, knows and try to understand what is the real danger above them. At the same point, there is two volcanoes above it. Sinabung, a big uh, eruption a couple of years ago and still uh, active until today. And another one is uh, Sibaya. These two volcanoes has the story of fights. Uh, the local company says that it is the macho volcano, Sinabung, and versus the macho volcano, uh, Sibaya. And at that uh, time, it is a revenge, it is a fight between these two volcanoes, fighting uh, one another. And um, interestingly, uh, from uh, this uh, case, uh, we can see that these stories have been uh, going down from generation uh, to generation, but at that time, the, the government didn't realize that these volcanoes are currently fighting or revenge with one another. And uh, they, uh, they created the... Uh, Conflict. Another example is a classic example of volcano uh, eruptions and uh, myths about the dragons that was uh, inside uh, the uh, volcano. And there's a story related to that. And this people uh, provide or people understand the dangers of the uh, Mount Agung uh, volcano. And there's also been a uh, recorded. Uh, stories about the Rinjani or uh, the, the Anjani goddess in the uh, Lombok uh, island. And people are aware that uh, volcanoes are uh, dangerous and it's a story being told down ge generation from uh, generation. And uh, now, uh, in many people do uh, research about uh, Tsunami, tsunami warning, and indigenous uh, knowledge, especially in the Simulu uh, island. So, small, small uh, run, uh, run, and this has been uh, done uh, generation to generation. Another similar mythological creature, like in Aceh, they would have the serpent or the snake, whereas in uh, the Java Islands, they would have the queen of the south. Throughout the southern coast of uh, Java. There's many uh, cultural uh, tributes to, to the queen. So people are aware that uh, the sea or the ocean of the southern sea is uh, dangerous. And uh, research has shown that it's uh, uh, prone to earthquakes and uh, tsunamis. Uh, one interesting thing is the motive of the batik that this queen uses. It's called uh, parang, parang rusak. Parang means uh, wave. It can mean wave. On the other hand, it means slope. But uh, in usual terms in Indonesia, we say parang means knife or dagger. So from this uh, motif, we can see parang is uh, dangerous, or the coastal area is dangerous. And this has been stories being shared generation to uh, generation. <coughs> and uh, in the Japanese, we feel that leadership is also a key role in uh, disaster. We have the king, uh, Hayamuro. He was born when the eruption of the 1334 eruption made. And then Sukarno, uh, when he was born, also Mount Kulut also erupt. So in Java, Javanese uh, culture, legitimacy of a leader depends on when is the next eruption. So who will be the next leader of Indonesia? They will try to connect it with the uh, eruptions and leadership. Also, uh, Sri Sultan, uh, the ninth uh, Sultan of the Mataram uh, Kingdom, gave a task to Marijan, uh, the gatekeeper of Mount Merapi uh, volcano. 
in 2006, I had the opportunity to uh, witness the Labuhan paying tribute to the volcano eruption. Uh, we stayed there uh, one night uh, at his place and did the ceremony, climbing up and paying uh, tribute. So we can see there is a close connection emotionally and uh, the lineage between the Japanese people. So uh, this is an important part where disasters and uh, leadership and stories <coughs> must be told orally to inspire the next uh, generation. I even uh, visited during my time as a work uh, visiting a uh, Kalimantan uh, region. There's two interesting uh, stories. Who is the protector of the forest? At that time, uh, Dayak is the last protector of the forest. And who is the protector of the river? And in uh, the kingdom of Kutai Katanegara, which this symbol, uh, I think you all know, is in the Indonesian garden in Charles Darwin University. This area will become the new capital city of Indonesia. So you can try to see the linkage between uh, the Lumbu Swana or the transport of the kings of Kutai Kata Negara. And he's the protector of the river, whereas uh, the Dayak community expressed that we have to protect the forest because they are sacred forests. And uh, if we cut down the trees, we will curse. And what can be the curse right now that we're facing? We're facing smog, haze, losing biodiversity. That's probably the cause that we are receiving. In one of my journeys, I traveled to the border between uh, these small islands between Philippines and uh, Indonesia. The first one is uh, the Awu volcano, and the next one is the Karametan volcano. In these two, two locations, the stories from the community is that disaster occurred from moral degradation. Uh, there was a giant living in Mount Awu. His name is Bakun. And he was tricked to eat his own child. And then that reason, he became a volcano and then erupted. Another reason, uh, or another story that generated in the community was the king of Maselehi uh, married his daughter, so incest. And that was the reason in uh, 19, uh, 1711, there was a large eruption in Awu uh, volcano. And on the other hand, the institutionalization of religion in Karamatan uh, volcano, uh, the local people say that these two volcanoes may be the only volcanoes in the world that has been baptized by a priest. And the Karamatan uh, volcano, his name is uh, Johannes, a male, and the twin volcano, or just the other volcano, is uh, Yo Johanna. And the story was in the community, if we do a sin in that location, the belly of the volcano will grumble and spill out uh, lava. So people are aware with stories handed down from generation to generation about uh, disasters. In Ambon, uh, in Ambon uh, region, we have the story of Nenek Luhu. She said, she said uh, the community said that if there's a hot weather and heavy rains, we need to, children will disappear. Also, what's that? In this area, in Ambon area, uh, people take very seriously taking care of children when an episode of disaster is going to uh, happen. And this is a picture of disasters occurring. And the final one is the story in Papua about the, how the Sintani uh, Lake uh, was formed. So an elder told two boys that if you drop your water container, which is made out of bark, if you drop it, you have to run up the hill. So the reason why, if you drop the container, the water will start going out. And then if you don't run up the hill, you will drown. So these stories show that Daniel uh, Santani is uh, dangerous and it can cause blood, so you need to run out. So these stories show that uh, people uh, need uh, to be uh, safe from disaster. So you have your concept scientifically, it's a people-centered early warning system, understanding the risks, how to disseminate the warning, how to act upon it. And then uh, this is just a timeline where in the past, there's individual uh, indigenous early warning systems already uh, developed. And then you have your faith-based, like the Christians and the Muslims and the Hindus, they have their own beliefs on how disaster occurs. 
and then the colonial, and then finally the community base, which is being uh, developed. So these stories from the community develop from uh, one another. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Next presenter, we have Dr. Jonathan Lassa, who's going to present his uh, speech about the future, maybe, the future of Indonesian prime management policy. How do we go from dystopia to utopia? Uh, Dr. Jonathan Lassa, you have 15 minutes. Uh,